In an industry that feels forever saturated, are there still perks to vintage clothing? Hi everybody, Spencer Line here again. For those that don't know, in 2012, I set up a online vintage and secondhand clothing company called Gully Garms. Due to circumstances of life, Brexit, COVID, and all the rest of it, I had to close the business sadly last year and reopen it under a new capacity. Not only that, but I'm now on YouTube wanting to give value back on the things that I've learned studying vintage and being a part of the secondhand industry since 2012. And today's video, I want to actually look at a bit more of an lifted topic. I can sometimes get the impression with some of the videos that they are informative and educational, but where's the fun? Where's that element of that's quite interesting from a side that doesn't need to be so negatively directed? And it's not to say that it's negatively directed stuff, but this is just to talk about my honest take on the perks of being a vintage seller. As somebody who started my journey as that in 2012, unbeknown to me that that was what I would become and what I would develop into, looking back now on reflection at some of the perks of that, but also other benefits to it once you're within the industry. Now, one of the biggest perks of selling vintage clothing is an unlimited wardrobe. If you think for one minute that the person who you love buying your vintage clothing off isn't wearing the stuff that he's selling to you, you will be mistaken. There are anomalies of people who might not do that at all or they might have it in sealed bags and all that sort of stuff. But for me, I mean, I have washing machines and dryers. I know any way you sound like people are like, wait, what? But look, secondhand clothing, it's already been worn by somebody else anyway, so this point doesn't even matter. This is a benefit to you. If you're a seller, you get to wear the clothes that you're selling. As a result of that, you probably like the products you're selling, so in a direct correlation to that, you will like the clothes to wear as well. <laughs> and I think for me, even to this point now, after 12 years, being 31 years old, I still come to work and leave with different clothes from what I actually arrived in. Just for reference right now, this is actually what I've arrived to work in today, but it probably won't be what I leave in by the end of it. And that's more of like a light-hearted perk to vintage clothing, the fact that you get to do that. But what do you need to have in order to get to that point? And I think there's three major points that you can kind of centralize this around to see if this would be a perk for you. The first one, probably being more appropriate to this, is it's preference-based. The perk of it is a preference to the person who likes vintage clothing. If you really couldn't care less about fashion, about style, about things like that, and you just like to go to Urban Outfitters or go to anywhere else, I'm not gonna assume, you know, that's not a perk for you because the preference to you is that you don't wanna do that, but preference-based. The second is the interest. Again, preference and interest may sit very closely on the same lines, but are you interested by fashion? Are you interested in the clothing economy of things? Are you interested in this ecosystem? system outside of your favorite brands. You know, one thing that I think you have to understand with vintage clothing selling is as a result of liking one type of thing, maybe you really like the NASCAR leather jackets, you would still need to understand a lot about sportswear, casual wear, just to understand vintage as an ecosystem to give you a good idea of where you are pioneering your brand or selling your clothes. And this one, obviously, guys, I think you know is a major key point, but knowledge is a direct relation to whether this would be a perk. If you don't know much about vintage clothing, I don't know how much you would get excited about the idea of selling it or being a seller, but knowing the brands, knowing the history, knowing the garment tag history, who started the brands, what their reputation has been, what major pitfalls have they had to learn from, how have they adapted as a brand and a company, are interesting and pivotal points to actually how you position your brand with selling the secondhand and vintage versions of those brands. Your entry point might be, I love wearing Nike Air Max 1s. When I was 16, I used to wear Nike Air Max 1s. You start learning about Jordan and about the 90s, his versions of Knight, you start learning about Phil Knight, you read Shoe Dog, you understand the brand, you understand more about the different swoosh, you understand about who designed this swoosh, you understand about how the placement of the brand was differentiated over the years, how they used influencers in sportswear, how they pioneered styles and graphics. Like honestly, that's just one brand that when you zoom out is one brand of many in a sportswear category that's in many of a clothing brand categories in many of the same year and age. And I know it might sound like a bit of fluff and waffle talk, but basically the knowledge is imperative and if you don't know knowledge, then that will just all sound like gobbledygook anyway. But they're important points with the perks that you have. For me to come here and enjoy the perks of wearing the clothing that I sell, I've had to therefore understand what it is that I'm selling. What can I understand about what I'm wearing? This knitwear is from a brand called Manta Ray. What do I know about Manta Ray? Is there anything that I need to know about Manta Ray in order to like wearing this item? It's not poetry, it's not expressive thinking and art all the time. You don't have to have a reason for why you wear 
wear an item of clothing. In order to understand the perks of selling vintage, I feel like having an interest and an understanding into what it is, is obviously the major point. So one of the big points, one of the major perks that I kind of haven't addressed yet is it being a business. Being a vintage seller is the same as being any type of business where you are offering a service or a product to a customer in exchange for an amount of money. And vintage businesses are no different. They still offer the same ability for you. Build a brand in your own version of your identity, sell it to people who you want to, try and capitalize and scale on that. Hopefully you create momentum and you turn it into a brand and you know, X, Y, and Z. The same way with all the other focus points when people set up businesses is that flexibility whilst also creating something that's yours. And vintage is literally the same and that's kind of like why I really love preaching about the aesthetic because one of my biggest entry points to vintage was the fact that I've been a creative person with photography, with video editing, with video shooting, with all of that kind of stuff way before clothing. And as a result, when clothing became a big part of my life, I loved the fact that I knew how to work a camera, how to make videos, and I was excited by shooting models. Models. That was exciting because aesthetic was a big driving force in me getting excited about vintage. Yeah, different one in terms of perks. I think that there are so many different angles. If you're a vintage seller, you sell secondhand or you're online in whatever space, whether it's markets, whether it's Depop, whether it's your own store, what perks do you think you have from what you do? What do you have that your friends don't have that you're like, this is a pretty nice perk? Is it literally because you can start work at 10, 11 a.m.? Is it because you can go to one charity shop and make 150 pounds profit? Is it because you got a really good supplier that sorts it out. What is the system or what is the perk that you really like about it? I'm really interested to know. Drop a comment down below and let me know. Vintage clothing as an industry is super saturated. There are a lot of people doing it and it isn't directly a sustainable approach that I will get into soon. However, vintage clothing as a selling industry, however, vintage clothing is a very excitable and an exciting industry still to this point with a lot of what goes on with a lot of the brands that you can find. And anybody that does buying and selling and goes to charity shops or finds a really cool item, the dopamine you get from finding something cool that you know has a higher value is almost better than any other sort of dopamine hit. Guys, feel free to drop comments, but please do like, subscribe and do all that stuff. I know I've become a YouTuber in that sense of things. I really do value it. It means the world and let's just keep shooting up that way. So yeah, guys, stay safe, stay sustainable, stay doing you, stay in good mindsets and just trust whatever process you're on. Just keep going and you'll keep going in the right direction.